And now we will do the elastic collision. This is the one where we have M1 moving at V1 initial and M2 moving at V2 initial. And the only requirement is that they will collide, right? So in this case, clearly, M1 needs to be moving a little bit faster than M2 or it'll never catch up. The way we're going to solve it, they could be going against each other. All kinds of things are possible. Positive numbers are to the right. Negative numbers are to the left. We know we have to conserve um, momentum, P. So that would mean M1, V1 initial plus M2, V2 initial. Your initial momentum must be equal to your final momentum. M1, V1 final plus M2, V2 final, like that. So there's one equation and two unknowns we have to solve for. Nothing is sticking together here, so we don't know that those are the same or anything. And then we want to conserve the kinetic energy. Well, we say 1 half m1 v1 initial squared plus 1 half m2 v2 initial squared equals 1 half m1 v1 final squared. Um, Bueller plus 1 half m2 v2 final squared. There we go. Now, we have two equations and still just two unknowns, v1 final and v2 final. So in principle, we're done. But if you go doing algebra and trying to solve for v1f or v2f, you'll almost certainly end up in some algebraic nightmare, torture. So what we actually do is we look for algebraic opportunities to simplify this. And rather than doing it every time you do a problem, we like to find them all once. And then once we find some simple algebraic opportunity here, we'll use that as the second equation rather than this, because this has these squares in it. And that only can possibly lead to problems, OK? So let's look for algebraic opportunities. And if you look at this and say, I would never have thought of those, that's fine, because I'm just showing you how we get a formula that you're going to use. OK, so I looked at this. Algebraic opportunities, there's an obvious one. Multiply this by 2, right? Get rid of all the halves. Done. All the halves are gone. Um, what else could you do? You could group it by m's, right? Here's m1's times something, and here's m2's times something. All the v's are different. So let's do that. Let's get rid of the two, the halves, and group it by m's. So you're going to get with, you're going to get m1 times v1 initial squared. This m1 is going to come over here minus v1 final squared. That'll be the new left side. And the right side will be m2 v2 final squared minus, and they're going to bring this one over, v2 initial squared. All right. So we took our energy equation, we wrote it like that. It's still full of squares. Too bad. But notice, it's the difference of two squares. Ooh, that, that, doesn't that sound familiar from junior high? The difference of two squares. A squared minus B squared, yes, is equal to A plus B times A minus B. So we use these difference of two squares. I don't know if that's how you used to write it or not. Let's see. M1 times V1, whoops, 1 initial plus V1 final times V1 initial minus V1 final. Sorry. Oh, whoops. Slipped out of my hand. I'm not upset. Um, and then this equals m2 times uh, v2 final plus v2 initial times v2 final minus v2 initial. Right, we just applied our difference of two squares. All right, so now we have that. This is still just the energy equation. But now let's look over here at uh, this equation. Because now we have all these sums and differences. So now let's get the P, the momentum equation, also in terms of those sums and differences. Right? So we have combined V1 and Vf, or V1i and V1f. So here's V1i and V1f. And they both have an M1 in front of them. That's convenient. So let's write 
M1, and it's V1I minus V1F. All right, that is this side. And on the other side is M2 times V2F minus V2I. All right, so still two equations, two unknowns. There's K and there's P, okay? Now, here's the weird part that you probably wouldn't have thought to do, is we're going to divide the two equations. Now, you can divide equations. If this equals this and this equals this, then the ratio of these equals the ratio of those. Why not? Okay? So we're going to divide the equations. I guess we're putting uh, k over p, if you really must know. Okay? So if we divide k over p, what do we get? Um, hey, the masses cancel. M1, M1 cancel. Uh, the difference terms cancel. So we get V1i plus V1f is the only thing on the left. That's weird. And what's on the right? M2's cancel, differences cancel. Look at that. V2f plus V2i. That's always going to be true. Why? Is that saying something about center of mass or relativity or what? No, it's not saying anything. It's just sort of a mixture of the kinetic energy uh, requirement and the uh, momentum requirement. And we've just done some algebra to get rid of the squares. That's really all it is. So now, you have two equations, two unknowns. You can still use this one, okay? You might say, hey, we put it in here, but this is still the energy equation. We just use the momentum part just to simplify it a little bit. Still think of that as a kinetic energy requirement, and you can think of this as the momentum requirement. And now we have two equations, and there's an unknown, and there's an unknown, and there's an unknown, and oops, there's an unknown, and there's an unknown. So next we'll show you how to finally bring this all the way down to useful expressions.